This is Off the Break Podcast, presented by Silver Screen Insider. And welcome back to Off the Break Podcast, your podcast dedicated to current movie theater news, operations, and insights from the people that book the movies. I'm Cody. With me are Kyle, our um, resident media manager, who you can thank for all those awesome repertory publicity (laughs) skills that you're probably using. You're too kind. Ken, who um, is an action movie booker, and me, Cody. I am a film buyer, and I've now seen 18 top 100 films. Well done. I know. Golf, <laughs> golf clap. Thank you. Thank you. Mine are yeah. a bit more muffled because of the gloves, but you get right. the idea. <laughs> Kyle's currently got his full hazmat suit on. Oh, yeah. He shaved. And like Ken said, I'm shook. I don't know. <laughs> Just He doesn't look like the scruffy like quarantine man that he was before <laughs> I, I don't know why people keep picturing me this way because i have been shaving quite a bit more than most people during this i know but it just is like it goes from hair to no hair it's like whoa he's emerged something's from- different True, you only see me in spurts <laughs> i know i just pop in and out and yeah you never know if it's a full beard or if it's uh clean shaven right. he's emerged <laughs> from his quarantine cocoon bright-eyed bushy-tailed and clean shaven he's ready to go always but he's wearing a hat so I think that mop of hair on top is still unruly. Um, It's a bit more unruly because there was an attempt to try and have it cut at the house. (gasps) Okay. Oh, my gosh. It's... it's, (laughs) Take it off. Did your girlfriend... Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Take it off. She's not going to like that I talked about this on the air, but (laughs) it's funny. It's hilarious. So it's not bad on the front, and it's hard to tell because of, like, the hat hair, but it's the back that is the worst part. (laughs) Ooh, it's a where it's tr- just layers <laughs> like lines straight this. across the back it's just layered lines like <laughs> yep. a rock face it i love is, her she's amazing it was a good attempt it is but, incredible yeah. and we'll post photos later today oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> i was wondering why you were wearing a hat that was a new addition to your ensemble <laughs> that, that was part of it was because it's sunny the other part is definitely because it got chopped up quite I think a bit it was like a distraction like oh shave the beard don't look at, don't just yeah. look at my face that's just look really at it. why i shaved party, the party in yeah. the front rock quarry in the back <laughs> it's like straight lines yep i think there was an attempt to layer but or didn't. something yeah <laughs> you're, you're young it'll grow back i can't afford oh, to have a bad haircut that's ever true. again that's true love right there he's like <laughs> I'm dealing with it. <laughs> Just got too shaken at one point. I was like, eh, why not? Maybe I'll save a couple of bucks. Well, <laughs> not no. quite, but it was a good attempt, though. It was all yeah. in good fun. Nice. <laughs> nice. Are you going to just take the buzzers next time and be like, Rrr. it'll happen soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we shall forget about this and never talked, speak of it. We've talked about that as well. There will be buzzers. <laughs> he's, afraid, he's afraid to go to the barber. <laughs> yeah. to sh- can you the barber will this? be like, get out. <laughs> the barber will be like, you're like the hundredth case I've seen. So I'm oh, good. I'm, I'm sure it would have been. I'm probably sure not the worst. Sitting yeah. there with a bunch of guys with the exact same thing in line <laughs> yeah. waiting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we all love our wives six, and girlfriends. Six feet apart, of course. <laughs> yeah. Six feet apart. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's... Did that happen over the weekend? Yeah, like Didn't last we weekend, Didn't we have probably. you come in? Uh, the last weekend? Only no, for no, Friday's podcast. Like two days ago. I was still wearing my hat. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's grown out? Oh, man. <laughs> it's, this week has been so crazy with bookings. There are so many more theaters coming online. And you think like, oh, I might have six screens. And that's only six bookings for this week, but that's six bookings at once. And then we're dr- trying to book these combo drives. And so you're booking like four or five weeks at a time. So six turns into 30, like really quickly. Yeah. Oh. And if you're planning on opening a uh, drive-in in your cornfield, backyard, parking lot, um, yeah, just email me at Ken at Ken's Nightmare Scenario dot com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I a really applaud and am always surprised by people's ambitions enthusiasm and that entrepreneurial spirit that really just permeates american culture everybody looks at a disaster and maybe sees an opportunity unfortunately (laughs) we are getting just inundated with requests about like how can i start a drive-in theater and they're not 
le- I don't want to say legitimate because these people really are like trying to thinking that there's an opportunity there to create something for the community. They're, it's all coming from good places. I'm not trying to put that down. It's just that it's not long term solutions. It's always like, oh, I just want to do like four or five shows and in this parking lot and have a food truck there. And that sounds great, but that's not anything our office can help you with. Um, cause it, you're really not using this as like a proper business plan. You're really not becoming a theater, even a drive-in. You're just doing it for the one or two yeah. times yeah. before but, a theater can open. Yeah, the interesting side of this is locations that we book for and locations all over the country that have added a drive-in to their empty parking lots. Right. Out of a, necessity. In a, in a necessity, but in a more permanent format that has added another weapon to their arsenal. Yeah. Where we can do these things for events and things like that. And they have a situation that's permanent and set up and ready to go when somebody wants to show uh, Wizard of Oz on Memorial Day and you can pull out your stuff and get going. It's a really cool idea. Yeah, I think done in the right scenario, it, legitimate indoor theaters can can create that same drive-in experience using their equipment or using their their location that they have now and their experience and their extensive knowledge and there's lots of people that are have thought about opening a drive-in that have a plot of land that are actually looking into buying equipment and making it a real deal and we're totally here for those people it's just really surprising how many are just like no i just want some to put a sheet up and just show a couple dvds (laughs) and we're like well that that's not anything we can really help you with like It's a whole different ballgame. Yeah. And most of the people we've dealt with have been in film exhibition for a long time. So they Mm -hmm. either grew up with the drive-ins or worked at a drive-in or some of them owned and operated drive-ins. So it's it's pretty cool to bring back that nostalgia. Yeah. That's been really fun. We've had some long time uh, clients that used to have drive-ins that are like, I should bring that back. I have a a location that worked at a drive-in in in the 80s and his last booking for a drive-in was Bambi. And then an X-rated film afterwards as a double feature. <laughs> Wait, as a double feature? As a double feature. I think like it a was legit a, back-to-back. I think it was, a, what, a Debbie movie? Yes. A Debbie was. Does Someplace? A very, a, very, <laughs> a very famous adult film, but it played as a double feature with Bambi in 1982, which is just oh a gosh. hilarious <laughs> scenario. So many there's, years before Kyle was born. There's so many questions. <laughs> there's just so many questions about that. Oh, yeah. But Bambi, I don't think I want to know. Bambi's mother dies and then Debbie's mother does something. It's it's terrible all it's around. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I think there was some talk about kids going to sleep right after Bambi and then do- cars just staying in the parking lot. I mean, you better hope that the kid is not faking that he's asleep. Yeah. Who knows? It was the 80s. It was a different time. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Speaking of a different time, HBO Max. Oh, we're going to get into that right now. We're away. getting into it. Is that the talk... transition? <laughs> okay. I okay, was... fine. What's your transition, Cody? No, I was just going to talk a little bit more about booking strategies this week. Let's do it. Real quick before we got into H- HBO Max. So, um, so, yeah, I think that I just wanted to kind of warn any listeners, if they're thinking about reopening soon, to really have your... <clears throat> program lined out the next couple weeks because even though I just complained about like 30 bookings at once my net in that location the next couple weeks are done and they will have had their hard drive sent and their their bookings are in there and set I think what's going to happen maybe not next week but definitely the week after as more and more states start opening up and the theaters start coming online you're going to just see such a tidal wave of of bookings come in to the studios into deluxe and the shippers and you're just going you there's just the potential to really get lost in it so i've been telling all my clients i'm like we have got to get two or three weeks booked this week and next week i'm going to be like we got to get two or three weeks booked because i just don't want you your bookings getting lost when there are all these other locations that haven't planned ahead of time that are just sending their stuff in so i think a a majority of theaters by you know june uh, of the independents i'm not talking about the big guys the big guys aren't open until july i think probably start july yeah i would imagine and maybe even closer to just opening for tenant i don't know if the regal amc or cinemark are going to open for unhinged on july 1st or not i don't think they are ready for the hot take of the day 
Sure. <laughs> with all these theaters coming back online after Memorial Day, we're going to see our first weekend of, you know, four or five, you know, possibly four or five hundred locations open this weekend. Mm. It's, it's, you think it'll smoking. be that much <laughs> this weekend? I think, we, I think we could. Or next week. I think it's possible. But my, six, five. my fire take is that somebody's going to move up to July 19th or June 19th. You it's not going to be one of really? the majors, but I have a feeling STX, Lionsgate, somebody's going to put their put their hat in the ring and try to jump the gun, hmm. see what happens. I can maybe see 626. 619, I think it will be a little... 619, fire take. Ooh, that's the fire take. I thought the thing before was the fire take. <sighs> no, no, no. <laughs> we got, early. We're, we're getting close to right. there being like a substantial number of theaters back. Okay. It's it, They're all going to be independents. We're not going to see Regal, AMC, Cinemark, nope. but... The other people, the ones that listen, the ones that yeah. care, we're going to see the those ones, ones that are closer to the communities and care about what the best ones, the business. <laughs> um, I've also noticed that in the locations that have opened for us, surprisingly, like I just didn't think old films would do that well, but um, surprisingly, they are doing okay. I mean, it's soft. I'm not going to say that a three hundred dollar gross is something to brag about for the weekend but it's so much better than nothing so you're expecting that number to be yeah, smaller yeah and it covers the minimum so that's been it, that's been really good but mm-hmm. but the ones that haven't been doing really well are animated kids movies right and you just think going into it that i need to have a kids movie and i need to have um like a classic movie and i need to have an action movie but that kids movie is always there and and those are surprisingly not doing great. And I, I think it's for a number of reasons. One, I just don't know if parents are ready to bring their kids out yet. There still might be some hesitation there. Yeah. But to, and, and they may be unsure of how the seating arrangements are going to work if they're going to have, because you don't want to social distance and have your like kids be six feet down the road and then another one, another six feet, you know? Yeah, exactly. I don't think that they're spreading um, groups out. I think they're letting groups come together and then spreading groups the distancing but that might be some confusion on the customer's part that the theater will then have to educate but also they've been stuck at home watching all animated movies all the time (laughs) and putting animated movies in the theater is probably not anything that they're like yeah let me go watch another animated movie yeah it's like why bother doing the same thing just in maybe a more dangerous spot (laughs) yeah yeah so um what we're seeing is a lot of teenagers, a lot of millennials, and really stubborn old people <laughs> that are like, I need to get out of the house. <laughs> I mean, that those are the demographics that you wanted to come, and it looks like it's working at least. So yeah. It's a start. You just have to get people through the door. Right. You know, the, this plan that the majors have, because they have to, because they have so many screens, is to wait it out and do that. But who knows if people are going to return that day, that time, without right. having some familiarity with the the program right right and some confidence in it and so i think it's good to open up before the big movies start coming out and i think it's good to um really communicate your procedures let people know that they can sit together still let them know that they don't have to be bunched with other people that you know masks may or may not be required like there's still a lot of questions and everybody's doing something different so that makes it a little bit more challenging to communicate. So you just got to really work on that at your theater. And if you're a a cinephile, which all of you listening are, Mm -hmm. (laughs) or you own a theater because we know that everybody that owns and operates a theater is there because they love movies, you get the opportunity to put these classics back on and see them on your screen. Yeah. You know, if you own a theater, you probably didn't own it in 93 when Jurassic Park came out. No, that's actually been a really popular one. Or in the 80s when Back to the Futures came mm-hmm. out. There's a lot of really cool options that you can put on your big screen and see it in your location. And what's kind of interesting about those that I may have discounted originally in my thinking is that even, yeah, they're on streaming. Everybody's seen them 100 times, but no one's seen them in the theater. When they first premiered at, yeah. at that spot. Or just recently. They yeah. just aren't played, you know? And so I think... There are some of those classics that are wor- that are worthy to be seen in the theater and that people are actually kind of excited, even though they've seen it in quarantine, to maybe go see it in the theater. So 
like newer stuff isn't is also not as strong as you would think and that um, some of the classics are doing pretty good yeah we had the same conversation when it came to them animating and remaking the Grinch because it mm-hmm. had been 18 years since the Jim Carrey version had come out you mean the classic <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly it Cody and I had seen it as kids and we grew up and showed it to our children but there enough time had passed where there was as a generation yeah. that had gone without even knowing that that other film may have even existed yeah. or had seen it on the big screen so um, Jurassic Park's 27 years old Back to the Future is coming on 40 years old <laughs> Back to the Future is 40 years old I think 35 old? or 36 oh my gosh it came out in the 80s so that's that sounds like the right math I'm not yeah. gonna do it though <laughs> <laughs> carry the seven yeah Numbers in the head? No, thanks. I don't. No. I don't do that. <laughs> so have, over the course of three, now this is the third podcast where I've been talking about my different f- views on repertory product. It's crazy how much it's waffled and changed back and forth. That you know, I wasn't super strong on it, and then I was like, well, maybe we should do really outside the box stuff because everybody's doing the same combos that that you're getting. And now I'm kind of like, now think about it as what are people going to want to see in the theater that is a theatrical experience movie. And some of the ones we named, I think are, are those kind of iconic films that you're like, yeah, I do kind of want to see that in the uh, movie. And some of those have benefited from time being remastered and yeah, brought up to today's standards. Oh yeah. Yeah. Especially if you can get it on a DCP, um, which most of them are available on. But man, the quality is so much better than if you're just putting a DVD in a projector and stuff, which sometimes you have to do. But for the most part, the good ones have DCPs with them. So, okay. Mm-hmm. Now we can talk about streaming <laughs> and HBO Max. That's, I just not a, to... that's, that's not a segue. You got to come up with a good segue. It's okay. We'll just I think on. we've maxed out on that subject. So <laughs> let's get over to there you go. HBO's new HBO Max. So they just launched this week. Yeah, Wednesday. With their $15 a month. Um, streaming platform and hmm, I'm kind of hmm, about it. Well, that makes sense. You're not, you're wanting, you know, the theaters to be opening up while at the same time HBO is like, oh, more content. Here you go. Stay (laughs) home, everybody. Stay home, everybody. (laughs) Yeah. So far. Don't forget that we have Tenet coming out in a month, but stay home now. Stay home until Tenet. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's interesting. Like so far, it's kind of been a mixed bag. Like people are obviously excited for some of the content, but apparently like the user face on it isn't really good yet like it's still glitchy um they aren't even available on like roku or amazon fire stick that's what i heard like they're available everywhere else except didn't have them because because amazon and and warners were fighting over oh is that why yeah i was trying to figure out like what the deal would be like why they would just ignore that i think there's some there's some licensing issues going on interesting yeah amazon wants it all yeah (laughs) (laughs) And HBO is like, we're not TV, we're streaming. Right. <laughs> so what's on it, though? I know Big Bang Theory TV show is on it. And yeah, they got Big Bang Theory and Friends, Rick and Morty. I think South Park is on there. What movies are on there? They have all of the Harry Potter movies right now. Uh, no, I'm doing those combos everywhere. People well, should HBO go see Max those. Max might change things oh, for that. Man. People should go see those in the theater. I was oh, wondering. Oh, for sure. I was wondering why Warner's was giving us such a good deal on that. Now that, I know. That's why. Well, people <laughs> didn't think Harry Potter was going to be available on it quite yet, and they just surprised yeah. everyone. Great. And great, apparently, great, you great. guys. So I'm sorry yeah. about that. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks. Hey, Kyle. I just I'm just letting you guys know, so you're prepared. Is the DC stuff on there? Like yeah, Aquaman some... and Shazam and one is Wonder Woman on there? Yeah, Wonder Woman's on there too. Recent <laughs> DC shows and movies, Great. Cartoon Network, Adult Swim, uh Turn Classic movies, mm-hmm. their channel and their stuff is also on there too. It's just a mixed bag of whatever so they, Warner Bros. Opted, has and what yeah. they, they get. opted for a bigger rollout than Disney who gave you like six options to start. Yeah. <laughs> Disney Plus, we have The Mandalorian and Bambi? No, it was uh, Lady and the Tramp. Yeah. <laughs> well, apparently, like, they also have some Fox titles, I think. Like, they were able to get most of, like, the Alien movies. And I'm pretty sure those were, like, Fox properties, mm-hmm. right? I don't know. They are, yeah. They are. So I wonder how they were able to well, pull that off. Well, it's probably, like, you know how rights are separated for theatrical and then TV and then now they're stream. There might be... um 
some, uh, some prior deal where they could have assumed the I'm, deal for the streaming. I'm sure Disney has no interest to put Alien on Disney Plus. Yeah, and that could be it too because Disney may have wanted, but and not that's Hulu. Not, that's not really a Hulu thing though. Hulu. But why more, not? Like what? I think Hulu's going to be more your live action TV stuff, and the things that are PG thirteen and up that aren't Disney. I think there's got to it's got to be just a better way to make money on it. Yeah. You know, HBO is spending money or HBO Time Warner is spending money like crazy on this. Sure. Right. In order to make it work. And they might have to yeah. spend even more money in order to, you know, get Roku available for them and Amazon and There's whatnot. There's going to be all sorts of negotiations and processes that go into all these. I mean, right. Netflix in the beginning was just a streaming service. You had like three titles and then it was a bunch of garbage behind it. <laughs> It took a while for that to grow. Yep. Yeah. But at $15 a month, whew. That's a lot. That's pretty pretty pricey. Yeah, I do wonder if the price will scare people, even though it does have, like, their favorite titles. I mean, like, Harry, the Harry Potters and well, the even, Batmans on there. I haven't there. even paid the $8 or whatever it is for Disney Plus yet, so $15 is a no-go for me. <laughs> it's way too much. Unless, of course, your theater charges that price and you find it adequate, then it's the perfect price. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Big difference between theaters and streaming. That's yeah. right. <laughs> I just, I wonder if um, theater owners have even noticed that it's become available and if they're more nervous about it or. Well, I'm a little disappointed that all the Harry Potters are on there because that's been actually doing pretty good in that, yeah. you know, that Harry Potter hits, um, you can take younger kids to it. Um, but it mostly hits millennials and that and that teenage group that that's going out and really going to the theater right now. So well, that's okay. I'm sure it'll be fine. I mean, we're really just <laughs> trying fine. to it's get fine. to the new movies. So yeah, I'm not, I don't have huge expectations and, and no one should that all of a sudden you're going to be even close to what you were making with, for, you know, first run movies or even just the newer stuff, even sub run. Like yeah. you're just open to hopefully cover costs to make sure that you get people back in the habit of coming to the theater. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just that short gap of trying to fill your theater with some sort of content. Yeah. It's just a means to an end. Yeah. We're right. going to we're going to cross that finish line by mid August. You're going to have most of your screens full. By the end of August, you'll have full first run product up and running. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be interesting. A lot of locations too we should mention are are opening at fifty uh, percent capacity. Sometimes even less. Sometimes twenty five percent in some places. Oh wow! And you just can't live off twenty five percent capacity. This really is uh, going to be even a d- difficult time to be open and to be using all that you know expense of being open, but only being able to get twenty five percent of your people in is, is really tough, especially off old product and stuff. Um, some places are doing a good job with it. Most are 50, you know, you're, you're sectioning off every other row. Um, but that's still tough. And the film companies too are also looking at that going, well, I don't know if it's worth opening a big title if all the theaters are at 50% capacity. So there's definitely an urgency, not only to be open, but to be open at 75 percent or more capacity i think to no one make those theatrical openings a little sweeter for the studios and states are being sensitive to this not yeah. being the you know us stemming the the curve where we did and things are getting better than they are worse so states are coming on board sooner than they expected yeah we knew that idaho was going to be at the very end of june and they moved it up so it's it's good at least they're fluid with the situation and working with our theaters that's been nice but we'll have to see how how harry potter is (laughs) now cody's freaked out i'm a little freaked out she booked it a thousand times i I have booked so many harry potters (laughs) it's crazy i i I should go back and count i probably because there's eight films i haven't this doesn't include fantastic beasts but eight films and i've probably done Gosh, I don't know, a dozen locations or more. Mm-hmm. Probably 100 bookings. I probably have 100 Harry Potter bookings where I'm like, Harry Potter, Harry Potter, <laughs> Harry Potter. Again, it's just only for the short term. Ugh. Um, What else we got to talk about? Oh, talk about another streaming platform that's trying to make its foray into all 
home entertainment is Apple. Cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. Apple's oh, got a, a lot of money to burn through. A lot. They must ha- just not care about this money because they're apparently now going to finance Martin Scorsese's next over the budget adult film adult called film? Flower. <laughs> I don't know. It's not for kids. It's not for families. It is just an old grumpy man film <laughs> and Killers of the Flower Moon and they are going to finance over $200 million, $225 million, and he will go over. Well, but it's just crazy because a few weeks ago we were saying $150 million budget for his movie. What is he thinking? Of course Paramount yeah. doesn't want to pay for that. But now that he got Apple to finance, finance the it. movie while Paramount is still distributing for theaters and yeah. he bumped the budget to 225 it's it's just insane. How did he pull that Apparently, off? Apparently, he's like Apple. You've got money to burn, and, and they're like, "You're right." <laughs> and he did. I apparently go to Netflix, but they were gonna cut him off. I think at like two hundred, or didn't re- quite work out, or they probably didn't want Paramount to distribute it theatrically. And I think, probably, yeah, I think that probably had more to do with it. And I think this go around, he's like, "Okay, I need it to go in theaters." So Paramount is gonna distribute it. Apple's financing it. <laughs> and they're going to um, get it on their streaming service sooner or later. No, yeah. We were, we were freaked out a few weeks ago about, we weren't sure how we felt about it. I shouldn't say we were freaked out about Amazon buying into AMC locations. And here comes oh, Apple yeah. throwing around there. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what's stopping Apple from doing that? Running the money right. train, tr- train through town. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just buy a chain of theaters too while we're at it. Let's I mean, get they crazy. probably could. And they've been talked about as being a contender to buy a theater chain and and do it but i don't think that they're really interested in in brick and mortar locations as much as just having using not the, yet it's <laughs> using the movie theater marketing and that movie theater um whatever it is that when it says it's been a movie theater so it just does so much better and they're just trying to capitalize on that i mean it clearly works that titles that were in theaters do better than just uh, going straight yeah. to streaming. I mean, Uncut Gems recently just uh, landed on Netflix, and that's been getting a lot of buzz. Like, it's the top streamed movie right. on Netflix's library so far. It's um, but it just a really being talked good about. Run before, even if it was a small yeah. one, yeah, it still had a good run. It did it had a really good run. It had a lot of buzz around it. We thought maybe it would get more Oscar attention than it did, which I still believe it should have. Yeah. But. But okay. yeah, that's what Apple's going to be hoping for here. And yeah, oh, Martin Scorsese says he got what he wanted. I'm just, part of me <laughs> is like, I can't believe they spent so much money on a film that already looked, that sounds dumb to me. Like, I know it'll probably be great, but it's not my <laughs> kind of movie at all. Sure. I just. I, I just want to know where they come up with these numbers. 225 yeah. million. Didn't they shoot Avengers Endgame for like 250? I thought that was like, the, yeah, the story was like 250 and everything was cgi that's, there was, right. there was that's, no non-cgi that's a good point though because i was reading i uh, i forget whose article it was but they were saying like this budget kind of makes sense in a way because leonardo and robert de niro who are both in this movie they're gonna cost a lot of money oh yeah and like, scorsese gonna co- is gonna cost money yeah exactly but i'm like avengers endgame they had twelve thousand a-list stars you yeah think, you think russo did it for free yeah. <laughs> the russo's and the did russo it for free bro- yeah they're like no do we'll We'll wait. We'll wait. You know, right. I mean, like, what's what's a couple hundred thousand dollars between friends? No. <laughs> so I just don't. I don't get. And by the sounds of this movie, it's supposed to be like a west, not a western drama, but like western esque. And I just am confused. Like, what is two hundred twenty five million supposed to do? Yeah, are they going to de-age De Niro again? <laughs> He's going to play three characters of yeah. different ages in the same movie. Oh, he's going to be the young man hero and the old evil uncle in it. Now that would be something I would watch if De Niro played every part in the movie. Oh, Except for Leo's part. Actually, yeah. no, he would. He would. He plays him as well. He, he does would the pretend vo- to he does be the Leo. Voice. He plays the voice, but not the, yeah. the yeah. actual. <laughs> yeah. Why do we even need Leonardo DiCaprio? Apparently we've got one good actor and Robert De Niro that can play the and evil I got the uncle technology. banker. <laughs> he can play the young man FBI agent and he can play the nephew. Yeah. It's perfect. It is perfect. No, I would see I, that as a two hundred million dollar because you had to DH him at certain points in life, and you have to pay him for the multiple roles he plays. <laughs> yeah, 
He doesn't get out of bed for less than twenty million a roll. <laughs> He's got twelve rolls in this movie. There's sixty million dollars him there, and then you know twenty or thirty million for Scorsese. We're almost at a hundred million just in talent. Oh yeah, that alone. No, it's just I mean I get it. Scorsese gets what he wants. He deserves it. But at the same time, it's not surprising that streaming services willing to look into financing i just think in the middle of a pandemic when literally everything is shut down the you know there's people are hemorrhaging money left and right there's no production going on apple is like yeah let's spend 250 million dollars on this movie just imagine scorsese just waltzing in during all of this stuff happening and it's like you guys have money make my movie yeah yeah (laughs) I, uh, hey, I don't know about anybody else, but my movie's getting made. <laughs> Why are we not starting production yeah. today? <laughs> I think I figured it out. What? So this is filmed, or is supposed to be in Oklahoma, right? It's a yeah. tribal film about oil and murder and the yeah. FBI oil on the uh, Oklahoma. Yeah. So there on was the an article the other day I saw. Christopher Nolan for Tenant was trying to figure out how to blow up a 747. Um, and nice. In real through, life? Well, he was trying to figure out how to do it. And WB asked him to be cost effective about it. So he went and figured out how much the CGI was going to cost and get anyone on site and making it happen. And he actually figured out it was cheaper to fill an actual 747 with gas bombs and blow it up. So that's what they did. They bought a 747 and blew it that, up because oh, it was less, I love it was less oh expensive. That, I love him. That last trailer oh God, where they were amazing. like, this is where Robert Pattinson was like, this is a crazy idea, but I want to blow up a plane. That whole scene is this, what yeah, you're talking and they about. they did it live because it was cheaper to buy a 747 than it was to do well, it on how, a computer how many cheap old 747s are almost decommissioned right now okay like, well go price a plane and see how much okay. it is and then just, just that, that is insane like how much cgi costs now <laughs> how integral yeah. it is <laughs> That you can buy a 747 cheap. <laughs> on the cheap. <laughs> Quote, unquote, cheap. On the cheap. <laughs> For some of us, that's not so much yeah. cheap, but you know what I mean. Ugh. What was Scorsese's plan like for budgeting? Like Nolan did that whole plan for budgeting between those two scenarios. Was his budget just like pictures of the three of their faces, De Niro, <laughs> yeah. DiCaprio, and him, and it just equals sign money? Yeah. And he's like, all right, 200. Yeah. We heard the office today that he... <laughs> He actually re had the script rewritten to make it less expensive. Scorsese did. Yeah, yeah. there was a conversation that what? it was rewritten because they. But they, he upped the price. Yeah. Well, it was because it, <laughs> it was it was a three hundred million dollar movie. Kyle, they got yeah. it down quite a bit they, because they to put Leonardo and then back up to two twenty five. <laughs> well, I think it's because they put Leonardo DiCaprio in a different role, but then they had he was supposed to be the young FBI guy that breaks the case, and then they made him the the an nephew yeah. yeah so he's like conf- but they made they beefed up the character a little bit more so i wonder if it was quote cheaper because he wouldn't be on screen as much he didn't have to fight a fake bear in this one so yeah. it's cheaper <laughs> so they could get a no name person to be the to be the young guy and then they could keep the de niro dicaprio scene still pretty Did- still in there so yeah, it do, could be cheaper. Do they have bears in Oklahoma? God. If I was him, I'd be worried. Every right. time I went near a pine tree, I'd be like, are there bears here? He's always looking over his shoulder. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All the time, his kids aren't allowed to have teddy bears anywhere in the house. He doesn't have kids. <laughs> that we know of. <laughs> that we know of. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, unreal. Um, talk, talking about CGI mustaches. We should uh, talk about Henry Cavill being Superman again. Did we talk about any of that Kyle, stuff? Yeah. Aside to, from CGI. <laughs> let's have a vote between three of us. Uh, I I vote that Cody's no longer in charge of transitions. Nope. Don't you vote, Kyle. <laughs> I can't do I, it. I'm in a conflicted... I'm, I'm very conflicted in the middle of this. I don't yeah. like it. <laughs> Just keep going, Cody. Keep going. <laughs> Speaking of my favorite director and now my, my favorite Superman. My favorite blank upper lip <laughs> nope that just sounds weird yeah. <laughs> Henry but Cavill may be back as the man of steel yeah. there's no movie um planned but you know we've got the, the Schneider <laughs> cut De- Justice League so he's probably going to come back for some role for some extra scenes in that yeah the the rumors are also that he's going to be doing like a cameo appearance in some upcoming DC movie 
we don't know which one it is, but um, what were the possibilities? It was like Shazam two and what else? Aquaman two, Black Adam. Ooh. Apparently, it's not going to happen for Wonder Woman or the Batman. Aquaman two would be fun. If you put him, yeah, I'd be down. If you yeah. put him in a scene with Robert Pattinson, <laughs> he would look like Superman. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for sure. I defend mean, I defend ben, Pattinson, but ben you're right about that. a bigger that. guy than he is. You yeah. put him next to Pattinson, it's like, oh, yeah, you're definitely like a, an actual superhero. <laughs> <laughs> you're actually a godlike being. <laughs> One of his quads is bigger than Robert Pattinson. Probably. <laughs> that, that is true. <laughs> he is a very big man. But... Would he look funny with Jason Momoa? Because Jason Momoa is so tall. Would he is. look funny? Yeah. I mean, they stood I mean, by they're... each other in Justice League and it was sort fine. Sort of. I guess so. Yeah. So he should probably do Aquaman <laughs> too. I mean, yeah, I'm totally down. My vote would be Shazam too, but I'm totally down for Aquaman too as well. I just want Henry Cavill back. Yeah. Come on, Warner Bros. Make it happen. He could show off some. I mean, he's he's got funny moments, so he could definitely show off some comedic chops and yeah. Shazam. That'd oh, be a yeah. good spot for him to be the guy who trains the the new superhero on I the don't, block. I don't know yeah. anything about Black Adam, so uh, just his. It's the villain of um, Shazam. So imagine that, but with the Rock playing that character as a villain. <laughs> Not the. I don't know. I don't remember Shazam's villain. It was the guy that was after Shazam from being in a as a child and being found unworthy. Is that the bad guy? Yeah. I forget his name also. Dr. Something. Yeah. Dr. Spooky. I don't know. I don't remember <laughs> his name now. <laughs> I gotta really watch that one. No, that movie's great. Even though I don't remember the name, but I, that movie is great. I think I have the Blu-ray of it, which I will use and watch. I will not use it on streaming. <laughs> that sounded very suspicious. <laughs> I'll go to you're not streaming for you, it. So you mean to tell us you're not getting HBO Max? Wink, wink. Wink, wink. No. <laughs> Why would I when I have the Blu-ray? You ha- you bought the Blu-ray. I, it is there at my she home. She saw it in the theater and I then was, purchased the Blu-ray because she was yeah. so intrigued. No, I was gifted gifted the Blu-ray. <laughs> no, it just sounds like you stole it. I don't know. I was gifted <laughs> I don't want to put Christmas. words in your mouth. I went to Target. I bought a uh, large package and then was gifted several Blu-rays. <laughs> <laughs> no. Thank you, Target. That's crazy. <laughs> that that just... sounds horrible. No, we get movie gifts every Christmas from the studios, and I believe I was gifted Shazam. Where was my gift? No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but keep that is coming. a heck of a gift. Keep them coming, yeah. Warner Bros. Yeah. I like getting Blu rays. Um, what else? Guys, since I'm not involved in the transitions anymore. (laughs) Technically, I didn't vote. (laughs) Speaking of Cody's angry, sad corner, we're be going over to Kyle's sweet and happy corner, TM. Ha! How was was Watcher in the Woods the scariest Disney movie ever? I wasn't able to get around to watching it. No excuse. Well, (laughs) because he couldn't find it. (laughs) <laughs> no, he didn't even try, it sounds like. I, I actually was not able to try and find it. He but was trying to fix his hair, okay? He had bigger prior, bigger things on his plate. That was part of it. There was devastation <laughs> happening around him. I don't have time to watch movies. I have to fix this mess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, now I want to ask if we can shave the head in stages. If we can give you the friar tuck first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just the horseshoe on top. <laughs> no, the worst part is the back. So that's what we got to get rid of first. Know. No, that's the part. Wait, why Stop am I talking? Cody. Why am I talking? <laughs> the top is pretty good. He could almost leave the top. The top is near you perfection. Should, you should frost your tips or do something even more fun with it before you shave it. <laughs> Just go crazy with it. See yeah. what I can do with the. You should ask your girlfriend to experiment more with bleaching the tips. <laughs> I would be curious to see how that goes, that's for sure. (laughs) You could even dye it a color if you wanted. Like, you could dye it blue if you wanted to. I mean, if I wanted to. Yeah, that would be fun. Which is not what I hope to do. I have recently discovered um, hair, these hair videos where this um, (laughs) hairstylist critiques people's at-home hair videos. Oh. And a lot of the times it's like girls are like i'm gonna bleach my hair at home and then they bleach it so badly it falls out oh god (laughs) yeah like it's really fun stuff what's there to critique (laughs) 
He's like, you're, he's do- like, he's well, like, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, that's all you can say. <laughs> she like runs her fingers through her hair and then it p- just comes out. The critique is like, yep, you're bald now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Start Anyways, over. We should do some of those videos for you. <laughs> <laughs> am I the person that's getting the hair to be fallen out or am I the one critiquing the hair? <laughs> oh, no, you're the experiment. The experiment. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I just needed to be clear. So Cody's got a punishment in the works for we got it so now this was kyle's first week at or second week trying to get it done and uh and he's already failed and so now we've got to come up with a punishment but it happened so quickly i didn't have a punishment in place ahead of time <laughs> you were more excited leading up to this yeah. that i didn't watch a movie a little that bit you didn't kyle think you about. have to watch the first five minutes of goodfellas <laughs> yeah. no, no that's not gonna be his punishment <laughs> anything but that and i can't make him watch any super cute things because that's the whole point of this so i'm thinking um obviously he has to still watch last week's movie and then this week's movie is going to be assigned sure that's a given but i'm thinking like a hot ones hot wing but then i have to do that if i don't watch my movie <laughs> so but he doesn't even like black pepper i do i like black pepper i, I don't like anything above that though. <laughs> did you not even realize black pepper could be spicy but yeah all right, just never knew that. But for but for my health, that is definitely not wise. You okay. don't want to see that after math. <laughs> <laughs> well, we wouldn't. That's the great no, part. No, I promise you, and you would not. <laughs> then your girlfriend would be like, "You're watching it every week." <laughs> <laughs> you will nev- not fail at this again. Yeah, I know. Or well, we, we we should call his girlfriend, and she should tell one of his secrets. <laughs> like, one of his secrets. <laughs> yeah, he has a bad haircut. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, no, I already told that one. Yeah. <laughs> well, we need to. We definitely need to make it a couple's thing because Cody and I for yeah. Cody's classic Cody Cody's classics corner. Yeah. Watched Mash. Oh. Okay, we will come back to your punishment. <laughs> Cuz my punishment was having to watch Mash. <laughs> That's a punishment. I'll oh take gosh. that punishment. Mash was horrible. I just did not enjoy it at all. There was no point to that movie. Literally two surgeons show up at the camp, perform some surgeries, so a few really not funny shenanigans happen and then they leave and that's literally the movie like oh they they take a trip to japan and then they come back perform some more surgeries and then leave and that's the movie very not exciting very boring and um was it at all funny with these shenanigans i, I didn't think it was funny at all i in fact i thought the shenanigans were just so awkward it was like this one nurse that they didn't like they um they pro- projected her having sex over the whole camp and i was like ooh cringy <laughs> and then they then they had a bet going if um her carpet matched her drapes so then they like lost the wall of her shower tent and she was just like writhing naked on the floor of the shower being laughed at by everybody in the camp was, and i was, was like a, ooh i don't like that either it was a time capsule of uh more misogynistic times. Yes. <laughs> that is that is what I'm getting at here. So misogynistic. I wouldn't mind if maybe on this top 100 list that they kind of looked back and were like, what misogynistic films that maybe were a bit too over the top with it could yeah. we take out? What can we bump out to put in something Oh my gosh, else? MASH could totally be bumped out for well, we, anything. We, we talked about this a little bit and it was like, it was a a more serious version of like Animal House. But Animal House is a much better movie. So much better. I'd rather it, watch Animal House. It was House. similar. Animal in, House is hilarious. But yeah. it was a similar in the similar vein. I'd rather I watch Porky's, had, which is the poor man's Animal House. Yeah, but it just had the, <laughs> the face of war behind it, and I think that's why people saw it as... This first song to start the film is like a suicide song. It's just like, what is? what am I watching? What is this? It's horrible. I'm sure the TV show was great. I have a, a oh, feeling great. a lot of people really like the TV show, and that is just so different than the movie. And I can't speak nah. to the TV show, but um, I bet that was great. But the movie was not good. And Donald Sutherland, I don't, he it looked, I don't know, he was so hard to listen to because he kind of <laughs> mumbled his he, lines. He was doing a Hunter S. Thompson impression yeah. the whole time, which was weird too. But we have. Yeah. So many great things we're moving on until next week. Cody's already promised great. to watch Pulp Fiction next week. Is that week. what I'm going to do? That's it. We talked about it. We All right. talked about it? Okay. 
And that will be my punishment. Oh, no. No. <laughs> no, that's no. on her oh. list. I got to fight. I was thinking I wanted you to watch. Um, oh, I'm for going, my second yeah, movie? Yeah, for your yeah. second movie, 13th Warrior. Okay. With Antonio Banderas. Antonio Banderas. <laughs> and you're going to be, it's one of those where you're like, because anymore you don't have like a, a trailer or anything to watch beforehand. Yeah. So you're just going to watch it go, what is this? Oh, this is. Yep, this is getting weird. <laughs> yeah. Real quick. <laughs> so, 13th Warrior and Watcher in the Woods. Okay. And we will come up with a punishment. All right. On next week's episode. Yeah. I'm just trying to think of what it'll be. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily we have a whole week to think about it. Yeah. If you have any ideas or suggestions for uh, punishment, safe for work, uh, please, please <laughs> yeah. send them our way. And, and appropriate safe for work appropriate and won't actually cause any harm to kyle i'm and afraid the hot ones might actually car- cause harm to kyle and i promise you, you it will. <laughs> and if you do mention that we should shave kyle's head into the fire tuck then i will vote for that that could be the punishment i like the girlfriend secret thing the girlfriend secret thing yeah that's fun <laughs> I, I like the punishment where I have to watch Goodfellas. Yeah. That's the one I vote for. <laughs> Your <laughs> just, vote doesn't count, Kyle. We just Fair enough. Bring Kyle's better half in for a, for a podcast next week. Oh, my God. That'd be awesome. I wonder <gasps> if that would be a punishment for her because she'd be probably... I wonder if she would be like, I don't want to go. <laughs> like she'd be scared and embarrassed? Maybe. I don't know. We promise we will be so nice and <laughs> we can <laughs> provide refreshments and drinks if she needs that, if she's mm. nervous. For all of our millions of listeners. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, you guys have a full week to decide. <laughs> I think we've already decided. <laughs> 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 so is that it for today's that, episode? That's then? it. We're oh. off to the weekend. All right. Enjoy your weekend. Get to your theater. Yep. Get to your theater. Your local Find- theater if it's open or your local drive-in, but not your local pop-up drive-in because that is just ruining it for everybody else. <laughs> and if somebody's playing Harry Potter to thank Cody for booking it. Yeah, I probably <laughs> did. There's a chance I booked it. <laughs> and also um, check us out at Civil- Silver Screen Insider as well. Um, we're continually getting older titles up in our system as well as uh, all the pictures, all the posters that go along with them. Um, so check out maybe there's a film that you're about to play and you need some stuff for it we'll probably have it yep have a good weekend all right take it easy thanks